day that the Lord has made. I said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Our opening scripture will be found in the book of 2 Corinthians. If you can get your Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians uh, 12, 9, and 10, two verses. So that's going to be 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9, and 10. And for those that are able to stand for the reading of the Lord's word, please do so at this time. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and 10. And the word of the Lord for the people of God reads this way. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, will I, therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities. For when I am weak, thou art strong. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, the doers, the encouragers, and the obeyers of his holy word. I read for the beautiful people of God, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. Oh, gracious Father, here we are, Lord Jesus, seeking you in spirit and in truth. And dear God, I just want to take time out to say yes. Yes to your will and your way, Father. Yes to your word that you placed in my heart on today. God, I want to thank you openly, Jesus. I thank you openly for our lives. I thank you openly for our portions of health. I thank you openly for your strength being shown in each and every one of our lives. God, I want to thank you for your brand new mercies. And yes, I want to thank you for your brand new graces. I want to thank you for another chance and another choice to sup with you. I want to thank you openly, Jesus, because you have been better to each and every one of us than we have been to ourselves. And Lord, as I come before you with thanksgiving in my heart, I'm also coming before you with repentance in my heart. See, I'm asking that you shine the light on ebony. Never do I want to be before you or your precious people with unclean hands or unclean thoughts or unclean motives. So I ask that you wash me, Jesus. I ask that you create me a clean heart and renew your spirit. Father, wash me till I'm walking right. Wash me till I'm talking right. Wash me till my ways are forever pleasing thee, O Lord. Lifting up a standard. Lifting up each and every heart that's under the sound of my voice. Wash us all till we're walking right. Wash us all till we're talking right. Wash us all till our ways are forever pleasing thee, O oh Lord. Stir up the gift in this building. Stir up the gift in hearts. Stir up the gift in minds. Stir up the gift, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Let it not be church as usual, but come on in, Father God. We welcome you in on this service. And we ask that you move by your power. We welcome you in on this service. And we ask that you have your way, Lord Jesus. Touch hearts, Lord Jesus. Touch minds. Touch cases, situations, and circumstances. Remember, we, your people, who are calling out to you. Father, remember the speaker of the hour, Lord Jesus. I'm asking that you bless as only you can. I'm asking that you remember the praise team, Father God. Remember our very own pastor, Lord Jesus. First lady, Lord Jesus. And each and every heart, Lord Lord Jesus, that's under the sound of my voice. I'm asking that you move, Father God. I'm asking that you step into our situations. I'm asking that you show yourself strong. I'm asking that you give us the mind, the power, and the authority to know that when we are weak, thou art strong, Lord Jesus. Lift up burdens, Father God. Lift up heavy hearts, Lord Jesus. Lift up heads, Father God, and let us know that you are able, Lord Jesus. The word was spoken today, and we are not alone, Father God. Why? Because you are with us. You are not even in our mouth. Give us a mind to speak your praise. Give us a mind to speak those things that be not as if they are. Give us a mind to hunger and thirst after thy righteousness that we be filled, Lord Jesus. So we welcome you in on this hour and we ask that you do only what you can do for us, Lord Jesus. We're believing that you'll do only what you can do for us, Lord Jesus. We're expecting for you to do only what you can do for us, Jesus. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray, we believe, and we all shall receive. Amen, amen, and amen. Clap your hands. We're going to go into the praise team, and then we're also going to honor uh, the mistress of service, Sister uh, 
Josette Williams. Amen? Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and put your hands together for Jesus. Come on and clap your hands. That's what I mean. Put your hands together for Jesus means simply to clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands, everyone. On this side, clap your hands. And on this side, clap your hands. Come on and put your hands together. Amen. Make a sound with your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. The praise team is going to come with you. Deserve it. Hallelujah. Our hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah.
know what he's done for you. I don't know your testimony, but only you can get that praise from the experience that you have. Come on, Zion. I know it's about 212, but I wonder if you can just tap in real quick and give God all the glory and give him the honor because we're blessed in the city and we're blessed in the field. Hallelujah. Any survivors out there? Hallelujah. Any survivors out there? You can wave your hand. It's all right. Come on, put your hands together like this. Come on, put your hands together like this. Everybody say bless, 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 bless.
You're ready, okay? You gotta pop up. You don't know what I'm gonna say, but you gotta pop up like popcorn. And listen, I don't wanna have to sit you down, so look, at, look around you, because I don't wanna be that one. I am her. Amen. So listen, I need two to three volunteers. If you're blessed, amen, I'm gonna ask you to testify, okay? Now listen, you can't tell it all. Just get right to it. Somebody say, just get right to it. Just, just remind your neighbor, you know, it's been a while. Just, just say, get right to it. Amen. I need two to three volunteers. Amen. You got about 10 seconds to stand. Amen. Okay, I don't got no takers. I see one behind me. One. I see two. Amen. And do I have a sister Yvette Andrews in the building? Are you here? Is sister Yvette Andrews in the building? And if not, amen. We need one more. And if not, I'm not going to beg you. Because see, God has been too good for me to sit down. Amen. Amen. And that's it. Amen. I have the two. I have two testimonies. Amen. And we're going to uh, have Minister Strain to go ahead and testify.
Praise the Lord, Minister Murphy. Amen. And at this time, we're going to ask, amen, Sister Vanetta, if she would help us in this. Amen. amen. And all right, what we're going to do is, amen, we're going to ask you to prepare your offering and to give. All right. As you're preparing to give, I'm going to ask for a little traveling music because you can stand up and come on around. Amen. Amen. I'll be the usher too on today. So if you could, uh, on each side, stand up and come around. Amen. 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 As you get your offering, you can stand up and come around at this time. Amen.
Jesus Gonna tell him about the trouble He'll hear my pain is cry He'll answer my mind Oh, hallelujah 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 When the battle is over When the battle is over When the battle We should have just kept going, huh? It's all right. We could have kept going. Amen. Praise team. One more time. And after the praise team, amen, we're going to have words of expression, spoken word, after the praise team from Sister Kiara. Am I saying it right, Kiara Grace? Are you in the middle? Amen. All right. She's here after the praise team. And he's able to do. Amen.
Lord, just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say it again. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, come on. That's a little weak. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay, because God is able. Amen. Amen. And I see that Sister Yvette Andrews just walked in the building. Amen. And we do want to allow, amen, amen, a brief testimony from Sister Yvette Andrews at this time. Amen. Sister Andrews. Sister Yvette? Come on. Oh, she said one second. She got to get. with breast cancer and um when that first guy told it I was like I ain't got that that one I thought I didn't have it but God took me through it yes. um I started going to, through the treatments my hair fell out <laughs> and, um, my grandson said, Granny, something wrong with your hair. I said, oh, boy, ain't nothing wrong with these braids. And I put my hand in the back of my hair. My hair was just in my head. I just started crying. I'm like, Lord. And I uh, started going through the treatments and um, getting the Chemo, whatever it was, I was getting it. And um, one day, I was sick, real sick. And um, at the time I was going through it, I had a stroke. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't, wasn't in my right mind. I was like, what's wrong with me? It was just God telling me, I'm taking you through it. Jesus. I'm taking you through it, but I'm going to pull you out of it. Love that you keep your faith. Love that you keep the faith in me. Yeah. I'm going to make sure you'll be all right. I was bedridden, couldn't move, couldn't do nothing for myself. But here I am now. <laughs>
it. But she said, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can't nobody do me like the Lord? Ooh. Come on and give God a hand praise in the building. She said, you're looking at a walking, talking testimony. You're looking at a miracle. You're looking at what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Uh -huh, hallelujah. She praising better than y'all clapping. I said, she praising better than y'all clapping. I said, she praising better than y'all saying hallelujah. I said, she praising better than y'all stomping y'all feet. Hallelujah. Glory. Mighty God, mighty God. Nobody like our God. Hallelujah. Just say thank you, Lord. Uh-huh. I can tell you what to say. Hallelujah. Nobody like him. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. It's all right. Somebody say, I got to praise and I got to get it out. Somebody say, I got to praise and I got to get it out. I didn't, I didn't stay at home on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday just to show up on Sunday just to petty cake God. But I got to praise. I got to praise and it's about 245. And I got to get it out. Come on and wave your hand. Give God a wave offering. Hallelujah. It's all right to give God a wave offering. He gave you the hands. Let me help you right now. He gave you the activities of your land. Yeah, I'm talking about all of us. Uh -huh. He gave you that good old breath you breathing right now. So you owe God a praise. Come on and put your hands together. God. Oh, yes. God, we worship you, and you're worthy to be praised. Yes, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. All right, while we tone it down, amen, we're going to ask Sister Kiara Grace to come at this time. I'd like to first give an honor to God who is truly the head of my, my life. It's a joy to speak to survivors during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I wrote a spoken word to share with you all today. It's titled, Pretty in Pink. You don't have to open your Bibles. I am gonna quote his word. It's uh, from Psalms 107 and 20. It reads, list various ways people in Israel have faced dangers from being sickness to being lost at sea, but points out how God is a rescuer. So I'd like to share that I am a girl mom. And when my daughter was born, her room was filled with pink this and pink that, the same way that my childhood room was filled with pink this and pink that, because over the generations, women have taken possession of a color, a color so soft and delicate, uh, have taken possession of a color, a color so soft and delicate. We cherish love and seeing the beauty found in all things pink. We've coined phrases it's become our crucial link from birth it's right there that undeniable shade pink painted banners to signify all things in a girl's world but there comes a time like in gardens when blossoms sway there comes a time where this hue hardens without delay there comes a time where pink becomes a banner of fight where pink isn't just pretty anymore it's a woman's call to arms it's Mm. It's when pink isn't just pretty anymore. That's when pink becomes a woman's decision-making color. Hebrews 4 and 12 reads, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. 
We're talking about the word of God, touching every part of our lives, being naked in the eyes of him when, his, when her cells start to multiply or her bone marrow begins to deconstruct an infection invading her joints referred to his word. It says he permeates joints and marrow. He is the discerner of thoughts and intent. So when you set your heart to be pretty and pink, you set your heart to take a walk with God. I'll take us home with Isaiah, with Isaiah's 41 and 10 it reads so do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you and I will help you I will uphold you so today sisters in Christ it's a joy to hear your testimonies of sadness and tears and prayers and triumphs but today we honor God but this month we celebrate all those who are pretty and pink Thank you. Y'all better come on in here. All right, Sister Grace. Oh, you can do better than that. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Thank God for the spoken word. Amen. And that was Sister Kiara Grace, y'all. Amen. Give her another hand praise, Zion. Amen. And I do thank you at this time for the pleasure of being your MC for those very brief moments. And now I will turn the service over to our very own, the president of the Zion's Women's Department. None other than, and I'm asking you to stand on your feet for our president. Amen. Minister Ebony Strain. Somebody shout amen and clap your hands for Jesus. doing today. It's such a privilege and an honor to be among those that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. It's such a privilege and an honor to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I do have a privilege and an honor to uh, introduce to some um, and to others um, a good friend of mine not only is she a good friend of mine she is a sister in the Lord we've been on this journey over 25 years together over 25 years together and I tell you I wouldn't trade her for all the tea in China I just wouldn't do it um, so let me give you all some background. Not only is she uh, my sister in the Lord, she is my sister, but she is a daughter. She is a wife. She is a mother. She's a grandmother and a true friend, particularly in the time of need. She has a career that spans over 25 years in social services, working with and serving others both professionally and personally. She has her Associates of Arts in Human Services, a bachelor's degree in social work, and a master's degree in social work with continuing work towards becoming a licensed clinical social worker. Amen, absolutely. She has worked serving others for the state of California. She has worked for the state of California, Sacramento and Solano County, private medical and mental health facilities, and currently has resumed her work for UC Davis Medical Center Health Systems, where she began her career path um, from the beginning, helping others. Her passion is advocating and working with others, helping them through difficult and hard times um, come from personal experiences which will be heard today. And it was because of God's grace and mercy that she is with us today. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Not only was she raised in church, she has worked in several capacities in church leadership from the usher board 
pastor secretary to an executive member of board of directors for Bible Way Overcoming Church of Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith, serving as a board secretary and chief financial officer. I want you all to stand on your feet, please. I want you all to start clapping it up for my dear sister. I want every heart to sound at the sound of my voice said, Sister Michelle, let the Lord have his way. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. to God who is ahead of my life, to the pastor of this church, to the first lady, to all the ministers, saints, and friends, to my family, amen, that I have not seen in the house of the Lord in so long. today uh, was not only giving God thanks and grace uh, for everything that he has done for those who have survived not only breast cancer any kind of cancer any kind of sickness and 
disease, amen, but we also trust in God, amen. The theme, my topic was trust God, thank God, and testify about God, amen. So today I come to tell you uh, just a few stories about little old me, about how I had to trust him, how I had to thank him, and I'm going to testify today about that, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We do overcome by the words of somebody else's testimony to help us get through. Amen. So throughout my, I'm not no preacher. Okay, let's get that straight. I'm just here to, you know, speak. Um, but you're going to hear some references to some TV shows, to movies. I love TV. All right. So if you know anything about me, I'm watching TV. I don't have to go nowhere. I could be at home watching TV. Amen. Something had dropped in my spirit just on last night when I was watching one of my favorite shows. <laughs> Law and Order, SBE. Oh, wow. <laughs> and at the beginning, they had this little saying, right? You know, nobody really catch on, but that's one of the crucial parts of the story, right? So I, I remixed it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It said, in the Lord's grace and mercy system, Trials and tribulations can be considered especially heinous without God. But in this place and all over the land, the dedicated believers who testify of these magnificent victories are members of an elect squad known as a special victory unit. Hey. This is my story. Dun, dun. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Everything ain't got to be all serious, okay? I like to joke. I like, you know, I might sit over there with a serious face, but I'm like, Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to thank God. We're going to trust God. And I'm going to testify about how I was able to do it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I do have um, multiple scriptures that I'm going to read. So I'm not going to ask you to stand for the reading of his word or anything like that. You're going to hear it from my hearing. Amen. Amen, amen. So I'm going to start out with Romans 5, 1 through 4. And I'm going to read this one in the New Living Translation. Romans 5, 1 through 4. And it says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our hope of salvation, our confident hope of salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. And again, that was Romans 5. 1 through 4 in a New Living Translation. How endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. What is that endurance? Amen. How do we get there? Well, we got to go through something. Amen. Yeah. We got to go through something. Yes. Amen. It's for us to, you know, to endure. You, that's going through something. Amen. As I look back over my life, huh, y'all going to hear about some things that I had to endure to where I'm now got the glory and the salvation of my God because I knew that he was there with me, right? I know that he was right there with me, and I know that the joy hallelujah, that I have is all given to God himself. Amen. 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 Oh, Lord, as I look back, hallelujah, when I think back of the goodness of God and all that he has brought me through, hallelujah, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, so, so, so glad, so glad that I'm here today to just tell somebody else that if he did it for me, what can he do for you? Amen. If he did it for little old me, what can he do for you? Amen and amen. So as you heard, I, I, I was, I did grow up in the church. Amen. I grew up, amen, having to go to church. We had to be at somebody's church. Okay. Well, it wasn't a thought, a doubt. We had to be at somebody's church. My cousin clapping, okay? So <laughs> both of my grandmothers, um, you know, we split. So I was, I grew up in the AME church. Amen. Allen Chapel was in the house. Hallelujah. And I grew up at Bible Way. Amen. So AME on one side, Pentecostal Apostolic on the other side. Ooh, you talking about some church. Now, wait a minute now. Huh? Now, how do you choose that? 
Well, I did choose, you know, Bible way. That's where I was um, baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At a very young age, I think I was like 13 or 14, because ever since, I've been running for my life. <laughs> I, 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 Sarah, you know, as soon as you do something for the Lord, the devil is on you. Amen. As soon as you do get try to get right with the Lord, the devil is definitely on you. Amen. Okay, amen. So before I get into all the things that the devil didn't, you know, put me through or the Lord, I'm going to, you know, go over some definitions. Now, I told you in the beginning that we're going to trust God. We're going to thank God. We're going to testify about God, right? Amen. Okay, amen. The word of God says, watch them fast in the faith, be brave, and be strong. Yeah. How do we got to be brave? First, we're going to start with thanking, uh, thanks, thankful, and thanksgiving. That word or those words come in the Bible over a hundred times. Amen. Of which thanksgiving is an expression of gratitude. Amen. Thankfulness. Hallelujah. That's a big deal in the Bible. We have to give thanks to God who have given us the victory. Amen. That's SVU, Special Victory Unit. Amen. All right. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything, give thanks. Right? Everything. It didn't say some things. It didn't say through the good things. It didn't say only in the bad things. Thank you to get out. No. It said, In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Everything. Really everything. We have to learn to be thankful in everything. That concept, my grandmother Buchanan started saying before she left this earth. She said, I'm learning to be thankful in everything, in all things. And I asked her, like, what, what, what you talking about? Ain't you thankful? She said, no, you. it's a learning process. Amen. Amen. So I have been learning to be thankful, in, and I'm still learning in all things because it's not easy, right? It's not easy when you're going through stuff that you say, thank you, Jesus, right? It's not easy when, you know, you down and out and depressed and then you in this dark place and you thank Jesus. That's not easy. It's not easy. It's not a hard task. But you have to put your mind on God to say, thank Thank you, Jesus, through it all. In everything, give thanks. Hallelujah. And if you know anything about me, I have been giving thanks to the Lord. We, I'm on a prayer line Monday through Friday, right? On Thursdays, I pray. On Thursdays, it's Thankful Thursday. Amen. And I get on the, on the line every Thursday, and I give thanks to my God. If I don't have no sad story, if I don't have been through anything, I have to take time to give thanks to my God, because I know where he brought me from. I know where I want to be, right, on the right-hand side of, he of God in heaven. So I have to continually give God thanks, and that's what I do each and every Thursday morning. If nobody else don't say nothing, I'm on the line giving God thanks. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So now we're going to go on to trust. Amen. Trust. What does the word say about trust? It's a verb. It's an action. Right? It's something that you have to do. In the Bible, it's found over 190 times. Amen? It's translated from at least 20 different original languages. Trust. I looked up the word in the dictionary, and it says it offers three main definitions. Assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. One in which confidence is placed. Who do we put our confidence in? Lord. Amen. That's that trust. It says dependence on something future or contingent. Hope. It said hope in parentheses. Amen. So we put that trust because we want to depend on that hope. Amen. Then it says a property interest held by one person for the benefit of another. Hallelujah. The verb definition, those were the nouns. And the verb de definition is to trust and rely on the truthfulness or accuracy of, to place confidence in, or to hope or expect confidently. <gasps> Hallelujah. Our faith is having this confidence that we must trust in the Lord. Amen. So those were, those, those, those were the dictionary um, definitions. And it's found in the Bible over 193 times. Hallelujah. Telling us what we have to do. Who we have to trust in. Where do we put our confidence in? Not in man. Amen. Our confidence, our trust is in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we got thanksgiving. We got thank. We got trust God. We got thank God. Now we got to testify. What does it mean to give a testimony? 
Amen. I wasn't called to the stand. I didn't have to raise my right hand. Amen. To swear on the Bible. I could tell somebody else what God has done for me. Amen. I can tell somebody else what God has done for me. Hallelujah. So when you give a testimony, it says it's important to focus on the Lord and his faithfulness. Amen. It's important when you're giving your testimony, not to sit, get up here and tell you what I went through on my own because it wasn't me, right? I have to focus on the Lord and how the Lord did it. I have to focus on the one who brought me through. I have to give Jesus all the glory, honor, and praise through his holy name. That's how I get my testimony, right? Amen. Amen. And Revelation 12 and 11 says it describes believers as overcomers who conquered the devil with their testimony. Amen. Overcomers who conquered the devil with their testimony. Hallelujah. Elder Shelton preached earlier and he talked about how we overcomers because the Lord overcame the world first, right? So why wouldn't I be an overcomer? I know what I got to do. Hallelujah. I got to tell somebody else how Jesus brought me through. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I got to tell somebody else, hallelujah, about my my life, my testimony. It has to stem from something that you've been through. Hallelujah. Psalm 66 and 16 said, come and hear all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. Hallelujah. What he has done for my soul. Come and listen. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he did for me. That was another verse. What he did for me, that's your testimony. You can't give a testimony about what God did for somebody else because you didn't live it. That wasn't you. You have to tell God what he did for you personally. Hallelujah. Amen. We can read the Bible. We see all the scriptures, all the stories about what he did for other people. Hallelujah. Examples of what they did, what they went through, how they lean and depend on God, what we're supposed to do, what we should do to help us. But how is that going to help us? Is that going to help us? It helped a little bit, right? But it's not really going to matter until we went through that same thing. Amen? Amen. All right. So... Let me tell you what he has done for me. Amen. Because I really feel like all my life I had to fight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God has given me another chance. Amen. Amen. A few weeks back, Dr. Williams, he preached on another chance. Amen. And I know I have gotten chance after chance after chance. And I have to give all glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So my testimony. Oh, my God. Woo. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He has brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. And when I say a long way, I mean a long way. Yes, God. Yes, God. Teen pregnancy. All right. Before MTV 16 and pregnant was a thing. Amen. I lived it. Amen. I became a mother at 16 years old. My God. Hey, hallelujah. Do not wreck me. Okay. We got any teenagers in here. Don't, don't do it. All right. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. But God. Hey, hey, amen. But God, I'm still here. Amen. To tell you what I went through and to tell you not to do what I did. Amen. But God kept me, right? I could have went a different way. I could have chose a different option. Hallelujah. That wasn't even a thought in my grandmother's mind. No, ma'am. Um, okay, but my daughter, you know, is here. You, you know, I got a son too. He in the building. Thank you, Jesus. But mom, teen pregnancy, amen. Right, not too far after I got baptized. Didn't I tell you soon as you do something for the Lord? Amen. Did I know it was wrong? Well, all right. Then we're going to fast forward just a little while. Went through another very traumatic experience. Losing the death of somebody that I loved. Amen. My children's father was murdered. Jesus. Depression. Ooh, you tell me about not wanting to get out of bed. Taking medications that the doctor give you to tell you that you depressed, it's gonna help you. Antidepressants, you know, this medication, that medication, crying all day long. Jesus, who can I turn to? Who can I depend on? And at that time, I thought the Lord was not in my life. He was, but I, I'm thinking that, why would you do this to me, Lord? Why? You know, at, at times we have to question things we're not supposed to, but we do. We're human, right? We're flesh. 
Amen. So I'm like, why, Lord, did this have to happen to me? Why that now am I thrust into being a single mother? I didn't know nothing about that. All my family, we got mamas and daddies. So what am I supposed to do? Why do my children now have to have no father? Why does his mother now have to lose a child? These are the questions that I'm asking, but this is something that the Lord is taking me through. Why? To help people later on in my testimony. Amen. Because I have ministered to others have, who have been through the same thing. I have worked with others. I have counseled others who have been through the same thing. And I can say, hold on. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is going to stay with you. Amen. The Lord is going to be near you. Even when you don't even think the Lord exists. Hallelujah. He's going to be right there. And I had to pick myself up. I had to continue to thank God. Hallelujah. And get myself back in the church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Nobody but God. But God. Hallelujah. And if that's not enough, I ain't finished yet. All right. Okay. Want to hear it? Here it go. Okay. Now, so we then went through being a teenage mother, losing somebody you really care deeply about that you think you're going to spend the rest of your life with, being in depression, dark, hallelujah. Then call, come all these issues. Jesus, chronic migraines. Lord, debilitating. Can't even get up out of the bed. Can't even lift my head. Three, four days in a row. Got to go to the emergency room to get injections. Why me, Lord? Why me? Then you know in the Bible it's a story of a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years. Well, I didn't have a 12 years. I had about five years. Going to this doctor, telling him, telling me to do this, try this, take this. That Lord, if I, I can't touch the hem of his garment physically, but mentally, I had to pray, Lord, just let me touch the hem of your garment. Just let it dry up, Lord. What is the problem? And, and the Lord had to, I had to listen, okay? I had to silence, it's the, it's the song says, silence the, the uh, voices in my mind, Lord. Let me hear from you. And finally, I had to hear what they was telling me. Well, ain't nothing else you could do. You have to have a surgery. What? What, what you talking about? Surgery. I don't want to leave here with nothing that I didn't have. I want to I want to leave out of here with everything that I came here with. Okay? That was my mind. Okay? Truly. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. They're like, okay, we'll take this other medicine. I don't want to do that. We'll take this medicine. Oh, well, ma'am, all you have left is you have to have a hysterectomy. Whew, Jesus. Okay. Well, finally, I listened to the word of God. He said, listen, trust me. Amen. So I trusted the Lord, had it. I'm okay. You know, I'm still here because you have that fear. Anytime you have to be put under, anytime you have to go into surgery, anytime somebody got a cut on you, what is going to happen? Am I going to come out right? Is you going to take the right organ? Am I going to wake up? You know, all these things is going through your mind. All these things is going through your mind. Hallelujah. But I'm still here. Amen. I'm still here. I'm still here trusting God. I'm still here thanking God. I'm still here that tell about if he did it for me, he can do it for you. So if somebody had that same problem, hallelujah, you got to listen. Hallelujah. Because we have that faith. We got that, that, that faith. Amen. The, the word said that it's the substance of things hoped for. I don't even know what to hope for then. Hallelujah. It's the evidence of things not seen. And that's the part. That's the part. I don't know what the end is going to be. Hallelujah. But I know that God got me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now we got yeah, y'all y'all keeping count? Yeah. Uh, okay. No, we, we, I ain't done. Oh, okay. Now, then I'm trying to exercise, right? I'm trying to be healthy. Ooh, what's going on? Something wrong with my hip. Doctor said, oh, no, you can't exercise. You can't do that. Don't even climb no stairs. What you talking? Oh, you got bursitis in your hip. Some long name. I'm like, huh? Yeah, we, we need you to minimally walk. Basically, sit down. Okay, Lord, what is going on? Like, I think I, I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. This body been here before. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. So, we got to keep trusting God. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, bursitis in my head. Okay, well, I got to take it easy. You know, my kids say I'm just an old lady. Some people call me granny. You know, okay, whatever. All right. Then, fast forward a little while longer, some kidney stones. Jesus, affliction after affliction after affliction, but I'm still trusting God. 
I'm still holding on to the bloodstained banner. Yeah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can't nobody tell me I'm not standing on faith. Hallelujah. I don't have time to fear. Hallelujah. I have to be stronger than fear because of my God. Hallelujah. Because I got Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Seven. Somebody say seven. 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 Seven, seven car accidents. Lord. <laughs> That's my father. Seven car accidents, okay? Now, none of them wasn't my, my fault. Okay, we ain't listen to the peanut gallery. I have been hit. Let, let me rephrase. I have been hit in a car seven times. Seven car accidents, amen? And I walked away from every last one of them. Amen? Hallelujah. None of them wasn't so bad. And even one time, I rolled, I rolled over, me and my husband, he was driving, and, and the truck just rolled. I saw my life flashing before me. Jesus, that's all I could say. But we got out the car, and we was able to stand up. I didn't have no scratch. Hallelujah. I didn't have no broken bones. Hallelujah. But seven car accidents. Some people get in one car accident and lose their life. Amen. Some people get in one car accident, and they got all these broken bones. They need surgeries. How they laid up in a hospital. Seven car accidents. And I'm standing before you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why, Lord? Why? 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 Why do I? Because he wants me to continue to tell somebody else to put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The song said the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 1 and 3 said, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Oh my God. If you're looking at somebody whose faith has been tested, he has truly been testing me. Hallelujah. But I got that patience because people, they look at me like, how are you going through all this? How are you doing this? How are you not broken? How are you not depressed? How are you not mentally crazy? I worked in a mental hospital, okay? Amen. And I know that that's where I could be, but I thank God. I know who I got. I know who's down in me. Hallelujah. Give him all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Just ask. I know my faith has been tested. Hallelujah. That endurance. I, I'm, I've been given that endurance to continue to grow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So now, all that. Now I got to put my war clothes on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My war clothes for real, for real. Because then I, I woke up one morning, hallelujah, Thank I, to get on the prayer line. And I'm on the prayer line, you know, and people are giving their prayer requests or their testimonies and the prayer is going forward. And something just don't feel right in my body. And we know our bodies, right? Yeah. Women. Yes. You know you're supposed to do a self-check yeah. every month. Right? Every month you're supposed to do it. Something didn't feel right. I said, okay, do I supposed to do a check? Something, something was paining in my breast. I said, ooh, what's going on, Jesus? Not, not, I don't need nothing else. I'm telling you right now. I didn't need nothing else, okay? I have been already gone through the battle, okay? So what do you have for me now? But again, like I said, I had to put on my war clothes. I called the doctor and I said, you know, I have this pain in my breast and I feel a lot. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Luckily, that's something that they don't play with. So she said, we can get you in tomorrow. Is that going to work for your schedule? You ain't got nothing today? Uh, okay, I don't care about what kind of schedule I got. This is prime. This is my primary focus right now because I know my body. I done been through too much. I just told y'all all the things that I've been through. So I know when something is wrong. I know when I got a little crook and a little hook, as the sister Carolyn would say. But something was not right. So she said, "No, we'll we'll get you in tomorrow. But if we have something today, we'll call you." I said, "Okay." Went in for the doctor to tell me what I already knew. She said, "Oh yeah, I feel it. Well, I felt it too." Okay, well, now what? <laughs> you, 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 okay, next. 
She said, okay, well now we have to send you for the, you know, for the um, mammogram. And um, if they see what we feeling and it looks suspicious, then we are gonna do the next test. I said, listen, order all the tests. Okay, I don't wanna wait and do this or do that. I want everything, give me the whole gamut. I got insurance, I've had insurance my whole adult life, luckily. I want it all. She looking at me like, I said, yes. And I'm sitting there like, hello. What we doing? She said, okay. And she said, well, the test is gonna be like two weeks. I said, for what? They got me in here the next day. Why do I gotta wait two weeks? I couldn't do nothing but depend on the Lord, right? I couldn't do nothing but pray. I couldn't do nothing but thank my God through it all, in all things, right? I'm going through this, but I still have to give thanks in all things, amen? So, but my mind, my mind is going, Lord, what is it? Lord, what happening? What's, what's going on in my body? Is something going to you know, be seriously wrong that I can't recover? What is it going to be? Hallelujah. But I know that had I not been through all those other things I just told you about, I wouldn't have been strong enough for this fight. Amen. If I had not went through all those other things where the Lord was testing me to see if I could continue to trust him, to see if I could continue to thank him, I wouldn't have been prepared for this fight. Because the test day came, amen, and they said what I kind of already knew because the Lord had told me, you have breast cancer, okay? Anytime you hear the word cancer, it's an issue, okay? But this one, it was like, again, why me, Lord? Why am I going through this? Why am I the one sitting here in this room being told that I have breast cancer? But then she said, and she saw the look on my face, and she said, did you hear what I said? I said, oh, I heard you. I'm just praying in my mind. Amen. She said, okay, well, you know, I'm going to give you some things that, you know, the next steps. I said, okay. And she kept checking in on me. Well, are you okay? Because this was on the phone. I said, yes. I was real quiet. I said, yes. She said, um... I just want to make sure you're okay. We can have you speak to a social worker. I said, I am one. Um, okay. I said, I, I got it. I heard, I heard you loud and clear. She said, okay, well, you know, we're going to schedule the appointment, and you're going to come in, and, you know, we're going to go over everything you have to do. Hey, Amen. But I'm still praying. I'm still praying in my mind. Hallelujah. Praying, praying, praying. Like the, the, Lord, the word said, pray always with all prayer and supplication. Amen. I'm praying in my mind because it, it's going to make a difference on what type of cancer, you know, if you know anything about it, what type, what stage it's in. So I don't want to go too far, but I just want to give God all the glory because, like I said, if it had not been through everything else where the Lord was giving me these tests, Okay, it was test after test after test that I had to thank the Lord, amen, that I had to continue to give God the glory. He said, okay, now here you go. Now what you going to do? Are you ready to give up yet? No. You ready to throw in the towel? No. I'm still going to thank you, hallelujah, through it all, in all things. I'm still going to give God the thanks, the glory, the honor, the praise. Because my God, hallelujah, told me that he would never leave me and he would never forsake me. Hallelujah. My God said that no weapon that's formed against me is going to prosper. Hallelujah. So this is another weapon. Hallelujah. It's not going to prosper. It's not going to take me out. And I'm here today. Amen. I'm here today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. I know what he did for me. I know what he has done for me. Hallelujah. But I also remember, hallelujah. Oh, I had to go back to the word. It was three, three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went to the fire and they came out and they wasn't born. Burned. Hallelujah. David went down in the lion's den and he came back and he wasn't uh, scratched. He wasn't bruised. He wasn't bitten. I know what he did for those people, so why couldn't he do it for me? Amen. Why was I any different from anybody that I read in the Bible? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Surgery number one. Went in there and I said, Hol hold on. Before y'all even put me to sleep. We're going to pray. Now, if anybody been in the hospital, had no surgery, probably ain't had as many as I had, uh, they, it's like 50 people come to you, keep coming to your bed, bothering you. Oh, we want to check this. Oh, we want to check that. Oh, we want to do this. I'm this person. I'm that person. Every last one of them that came to my bed, I said, before I go to sleep, we're going to pray. Okay, and they looking at me like I'm crazy, right? So then here comes somebody, oh, I'm the anesthesiologist. We're going to roll you down to the room. <coughs> 
Okay, well, I'm going to just give you this light setup. No, no, no. I don't give me nothing until we in there because everybody in the room going to hear this prayer. Amen. Everybody that's in that operating table, it, um, um, while I'm on that operating table, everyone who's going to have a hand in it, even if they a nurse standing on the sidelines making sure everything's okay, they're going to hear this prayer. Amen. So we got in there. He looking at me crazy, but this is the process. I said, my process is different, and I have another assignment. Amen. Hallelujah. So we get in the, we get in the room, and, they, and, the, and the lady says, oh, she wants to pray. And, and the guy said, oh, no, go ahead. I said, no, no, everybody stop what y'all doing. We all going to pray. Or, you know, and they like, oh, and I know they sick of me, okay? Because Kaiser, whew, my, I probably got my own little room of archive of files. I didn't been there so much. So I said, so, you know, I, I prayed. I prayed to the depths of my soul, Lord, take me under and take, bring me back out, making sure everything is okay. You know, I prayed, okay, wake up. They're like, some lady, one of the nurses, she said, Ooh, everybody just loved that you, you know, you came in there about your business and you, you prayed. I said, well, praise God. Hopefully you got some of it too, you know. A couple weeks later, they called and they said, uh, the doctor called and said, we didn't get it all. Jesus. Why, Lord? You know, I'm still asking why. I'm, it's flesh first, okay? You know, we're going to thank and praise God later, later, but why, Lord? Why? So now I said, well, what do that mean? She said, well, we're going to do another surgery. We, we, I didn't clear my margins. I said, you couldn't do that when you was in there? Okay, so, all right. Surgery number two. Once again, all the people come to the bed. Okay, we're going to pray. Maybe I didn't pray hard enough the first time because, Lord, I'm here again. Okay, so I told them again. They looking at me crazy. Okay, the nurse, nope. No, no ma'am. If y'all, if, y'all had, if y'all read the notes, if y'all did y'all homework, y'all would have knew. Y'all ain't trying to put me under until I get in the room. Amen? Because we're going to pray. Ain't nothing changed. So we get in there and pray again. Amen. Hallelujah. A couple weeks later, she called. She said, all right, I got some good news. I said, well, any news that you did before, from before that's going to be better is good to me. She said, all the cancer was removed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She said, I got it all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She said, I don't have to go back in, but... I said, oh, Lord, here we go. But you do have to do some treatment. I said, okay, well, you know, I didn't survive the surgery. And she said, you know, I want to thank you because you were diligent enough to catch it early. Amen. She said, I read your notes. She did her homework. She said, and when you called the doctor, you told them, or the, uh, the line, the appointment line, you told them that you had just woke up and felt that love that day. And that you wanted a soon appointment. I said, yes, why let it fester? And she said, and because of that, it had not what they call metastasized. It had not went nowhere else. Hallelujah. It, it was just one in one area, and they wanted to make sure, you know, that they got it all, and they did. And she said, it's people like you that need to be more aware of their bodies. Amen. I said, well, I've been, I said, if you, if you read all the, the background, you know, I've been through a, 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 lot, a lot of things medically. So I know my body, amen. But I also know the Lord, and I know how to listen to the Lord. I know that he gives me a discerning spirit to know when there's something not only wrong with me, but with others as well, amen. So, hallelujah. Now I'm in recovery. I said, well, what kind of treatment? You know, I'm laid up. What, 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 what is this treatment? I, I know cancer. I work in the medical field. I said, I have to do some chemo because you just said I called her earlier. She said, no. That I said, well, praise God. She said, but you have to do radiation. I said, okay, I could do that. You know, my God and brought me through a mighty long way. I'm sitting up there. I'm like, okay, I'll do the radiation. She said, okay, well, it's 15 treatments over like three weeks or five weeks or something like that. I said, I don't have that kind of time. She said, are you going somewhere? I said, um, no, but I'm not going to be coming back and forth to no hospital or to no office for no three weeks. Don't y'all have a shorter course? You just told me that you got it all, and you, all you want to do is kill off some cells. I could stand in front of my microwave. No, just playing. So, <laughs> so she said, well, she said, you know what? She said, well, you can't be a candidate for the shorter treatment. See, if you don't ask, you don't know, right? Uh, my daddy said a closed mouth don't get fed. All right. Hey. Okay. So I had to ask, right? Because I really did not want to be. And then the offices, I live in North Sac. The office way in Rancho. Who want to be going back and forth for three weeks? 
Not me, I don't even like traffic, no. So she said, well, you know what, let me call you back. She called back, she said, yes, you could do five treatments. It, it goes for two weeks. She said, the only reason is because we have to give you a weekend off. We do three days, you get your weekend, and then you do another two days. I said, I'll take it, sign me up, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm like, thank you, Lord, I'm telling the Lord, okay. She said, but, you know, she keeps saying with these but. I said, lady, if you don't stop telling me but, so she said, but because it's shorter, it's really stronger. You know, it's a stronger course. And she said, are you up for it? I said, you don't know my story. I said, I didn't been through the fire. I didn't been burned. I didn't been through the storm and the rain. And I came out okay. So yes, I am up for it. So I, you know, I went through the five treatments. Okay, I had some... Uh, some symptoms, some, you know, effects, some side effects. I still can't even raise this hand, you know. All right, that was one of my, my shoulders seized up. Amen. But I'm here. Yeah. And I'm still thanking him. I'm still praising him. I'm still thanking the Lord in all things. I give thanks to my God because why? Because I have to trust him. I can't put my trust in nobody else. And I don't know if this is going to be the end, right? I don't know if I... I'm... You know, I'm young, you know, so <laughs> I got a lot of life left in me, okay? So I don't know if this is the last stop, but I know what I had to do. I had to put my war clothes on, okay? I had to put on the breastplate and the, and the, and the shot, and shot my feet. All right? I had to put on the helmet of salvation. I had to come prepared for this fight. I'm still fighting, amen, because like I said, you know, I still, my arm, all right, well, I can still wave and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I don't know what's next to come. Amen. I don't know what the end's going to be. Hallelujah. But I'm celebrating that I have survived with God. I'm celebrating because I am a survivor. Hallelujah. I'm celebrating because I put my trust in God. And where else should I put it? No, no man couldn't have did this, right? It was nobody but God. Hallelujah. Nobody but God. One in eight women. One in eight women will get breast cancer. Amen. That's, that's a real small number. One in three women won't even be screened. Amen. So we're here today because we're celebrating survivorship. And so and all, to all my women, y'all got y'all ribbons and amen. It's breast cancer month. I want to make sure that you know what the statistics are so that you, because you could, it could be you. I don't want it to be. I don't wish it on nobody, not even my enemy. But one in eight women will develop breast cancer. Amen. One in three is not even getting screened. Get your mammograms, your ultrasounds, your tests. I want you to be mindful. Do your self-checks. Amen. If it had not been for me knowing my body, just waking up, something ain't right, you know, then I, it could have got worse. They could have said, oh, you got stage three or four, then metastasize, there's no treatment, you can't do nothing, you just gonna have to live with it and die. But that's not my story. Amen. That's not my story. That's not what the Lord had for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm here. I'm trusting him. I'm thanking him. And I'm telling somebody else about how he did it. I'm telling somebody else that you have to put your trust in nobody but God. Hallelujah. And if he did it for me, hallelujah, that he will do it for you. And I will leave you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. With Mark 5 and 34. And it said, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your faith has made you well. Had I not had that faith that I was going to get through this, I wouldn't be well. It said your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go in peace. Go in peace. I got peace. Because I know that I'm healed. Hallelujah. Thank you. I got the peace. The Lord, the word just told me. It said, go and your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. And then one last scripture I'm going to leave you with. What I, oh, I think I put it in my phone. See, I have so much in, in my mind. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Amen. It come from 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Come on, Bible. 1 Peter 5 and 10. I think that's where I want to be. Yes. 1 Peter 5 and 10. It says, and after you have suffered a little while. Yes. Now, y'all just heard my story. Yes. I didn't suffer. Hallelujah. Time and time again. Hallelujah. The Lord said that my faith is going to make me well. But 1 Peter 5 and 10 said, after you have suffered a little while, the God 
God of all grace, hallelujah, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Victory is mine, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thanking the Lord for Sister Michelle coming, talking about trusting God, thanking God, and testifying of the goodness of the Almighty God. We will have closing remarks from our very own associate pastor. Come on up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty word. Amen. Pastor, Elder. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What a word. What a testimony. Yes. Amen. To show what the goodness of our God and the power of our God until shows you what, what happens when you trust in him. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to hold you. Let us pray. Is there anyone that needs prayer? Altar call? Anyone wants prayer? Anyone? Anyone? Amen. Let us stand. Celebrating survivorship with God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the testimony that we've heard. We thank you for you showing your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask that you would take us to our several places of abode and bring us back at the appointed time. And God, we will give your name glory, we will give your name honor, and we will give your name praise. In Jesus' name, amen.